Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome and thank you for joining us today on um, well, today's webinar. So my name is Jamie Ross and I'm the Partnership Director um, at UMI and we're hosting a webinar for the EM3 Growth Hub. If I could just take a minute or two, um, just give you a bit of background on the Growth Hub uh, in case you're new. Um, we are a fully funded business support service um, that, that provides advice, coaching, webinars and signposting um, to small and medium enterprises. Um, so the mission really is to help businesses recover, adapt and develop um, sustainable growth and become more productive and profitable. Um, all businesses at any stage of their development can access and um, receive uh, support from the EM3 Growth Hub's um, services, which includes support around COVID recovery and the UK transition support. Additionally, there are um, specialist growth service targeted at um, businesses <coughs> operating within key sectors. Um, which can offer business up to two days of free one-to-one -one business support and mentoring. Um, so if you have a look at the EM3 Gro uh, Growth Hub website, which is the enterprise m3growthhub.co.uk, for more information, you'll find lots of um, uh, bits um, that are quite useful, really. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our um, guest speaker for today. And welcome, Norma Foster. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jenny, and it's wonderful to be with you today. I am up in the north of England and it's well cold and very snowy here. How are things down there with you? Yeah, it's, um, it's actually very cold as well. Um, so it's funny because I'm originally from the northeast, so I feel quite at home now. Oh, OK. OK. <laughs> I won't make you feel any more homesick then, Jamie. <laughs> So it's fabulous to be with you this morning. Are you ready for me to... Um... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's great to have you. So um, what I'll do is I'll jump off and um, just for the, the guests out there as well, if you've got any questions, just pop them in the questions and answer. Um, and we'll take a break at some point throughout um, Norma and we'll just ask those questions. Yeah, absolutely. No, please do ask questions. We have a great group this morning and I'm happy to um, do as much for you as I possibly can. If we don't get through all of the questions, then I will respond afterwards. Wonderful. Cheers, Norma. Wonderful. Thank you. So, um, yeah, good morning. Wonderful to be here this morning. I have two companies, my own business, Norma Foster Limited, and I'm also director of the No Fuss Group, a not-for-profit company, and our aim is to help exporters with that unique combination of digital language and cultural support to help you increase sales overseas. And I've been working in international trade for oof, well over 30 years now um, and worked overseas for a good chunk of that time. I speak fluent German, lived there for 14 years and uh, French and a bit of Spanish. And I now have the privilege and pleasure of working with exporters, um, helping them to grow sales and reputation from local to international um, where clients learn how to sell and market themselves in a very authentic way. Um, my business model is all about trust and being authentic and genuine and giving of your very best and all of that to increase sales and reputation internationally. I'm also a qualified coach, a therapeutic coach, and um, help clients to optimize their performance and their well-being by transforming stress, building resilience and driving changes in behavior to help them meet their goals and results using very simple tools and techniques and, and coaching um, that often bring about lasting change within uh, short periods of time and accelerates international growth um, and cultural understanding, which is really, really important to doing good international business. So I'm just going to share my screen with you. So today um, we are uh, here to look at minding your export business. And um, what we're going to be sharing with you today are what I believe are the six essentials to minding your export business. So really, um, you know, a top level checklist with steps that you can follow um, that will help you to review where you are and plan ahead and also ensure that you're not just looking after the business, but you are 
looking after yourself. Um, putting yourself first, choosing you, because if you're in the best possible shape and um, feeling uh, good and performing at peak, then your business will be in great shape as well. And as exporters of products and services, we find ourselves living in, well, uh, incredible times of change at the moment. The UK's departure from the EU and COVID-19 are raising all sorts of emotional, financial, political and logistical questions. It's changed our whole experience in a very short space of time from being a customer, employee, a citizen, a human being even, and it's changing the way we live and do business. And undoubtedly some businesses and consumers in the EU um, may be less inclined to deal with UK companies, increased costs, bureaucracy, or just simply emotional reasons, while new markets and opportunities will be opening up for us, uh, but bringing with them their unique complexities and obviously ways of doing things differently. So many individuals and companies are experiencing things beyond their control um, and may need to get back on track or are overwhelmed and looking for ways to sustain their business in what is a, a challenging time. And as exporters, we're kind of used to dealing with the stresses of exporting, but COVID has brought a whole new dimension to that. And it's in really forcing us to look at new ways of working with customers who've been changing their behavior and shifting rapidly to digital environments. And that has made a huge, huge change. So what we know as exporters, um, uh, with international customers is that we are going to need to work much harder on the communication front over the coming months and years to maintain your current market position and relationships with clients, distributors, agents, partners, etc., as well as attract new ones. So we need to look at delivering that top quality, world-class communications approach. So how are you and your business adapting to the markets and your customers rapid and dramatic change in behavior so that you're able to survive and thrive and in this webinar we're going to be sharing insights resources and tools that um, can help you can uh, support you and your business's well-being essentially and what I'd like to do, um, first of all, is just get you to do a little bit of engagement with us and just um, invite Jamie to share the poll. What are you most stressed about at the moment? What are you most concerned about? And you have a number of different alternatives. If you could choose one of the following, because it will be really, really interesting to see where your priorities are at present. And I am very interested. Just click one. I'm really interested to see what your priorities are at the moment. It's always the interesting uh, part of this. Jamie, do we have any votes coming in? I can't. Oh, here we go. Ah, yeah, there sorry. Go. There we go. Have you got, have you got them? Oh, and why am I not surprised? Winning new business so often comes out on top, um, which is most interesting. And I think that is a top priority for all of us. We then have digital technology, and I'm sure EM3 can help you uh, tremendously well with that. And then supply chain and fulfillment, product or service innovation. So really interesting to see that. Um, and I think we can close the poll now. Thank you very much, um, Jamie, for uh, running that for us. So, you know, let's look at this aspect of looking after yourself, our essential tip number one. And um, a lot of people just simply don't talk about feelings and emotions. Some people prefer not to think about it or ignore it or suppress it. And every day we're talking to busy exporters who are feeling anxiety or overwhelm, which is why we created this uh, webinar. 
Um, you know, things like my exports have dropped. What if that shipment doesn't arrive? I'm not feeling well, but I can't afford to take a break. And we know from ONS data that 72% of exporters have been exporting less and 61% of them are worried about the effects that COVID's having on their life. So if you imagine um, a lion chasing a gazelle, the fight or flight stress hormones kick in for the gazelle, it runs, escapes and survives and within minutes it's back to peacefully grazing again, almost as though nothing has happened. And that is the natural way of things. But as exporters, we face that lion, so to speak, day after day on an ongoing basis with little time to get back to grazing, with little time to recover um, and flush out those stress hormones that can stay in our bloodstream for six to eight hours. So holding on to stress affects our mental and physical health and decision making, which is a critical aspect of the work that we do, but it can take only two minutes to get your, um, what we call your parasympathetic uh, system, that, that rest, that restore, that recover mode back in gear and you being in a good place to continue working. We practice simple techniques to do that and I'm going to be sharing one of those with you down um, the line. We have um, 70,000 thoughts a day um, that our brain filters out. It takes everything in but for, with our conscious mind we have about 70,000 thoughts a day. And it's interesting, our conscious mind constitutes 5% of our total brain power. That's the thinking mind. Um, and 95% of our mind is the subconscious mind. That is everything that runs the whole body, the heartbeat, the breathing, the cell, the digestion, without us even having to consciously think about it. And it is interesting that typically 70% of the thoughts that we're having are actually negative thoughts and very often the same sorts of thoughts that we had yesterday and the day before. So when we are looking at um, our mind and how it works, and very often these thoughts of fear and anxiety and such like are in our subconscious mind, what we want to actually achieve is that that thinking brain at the front of the brain, the frontal lobe or the neocortex as we call it, which is actually our brain's MD, that we use that more consciously to actually influence the thoughts and feelings that we are having and stay in that rest and recover mode, not getting stressed out because that's where we perform at our very best. So how can we use that MD in our brain, that, that frontal lobe to actually influence the rest of our brain, the 95% that runs on automatic pilot? And it's really interesting the way our thought patterns work. A thought is essentially an electric charge between two brain cells. And if we use those on a regular basis, they stay strong. Uh, if we don't, we lose it. So there's this aspect of using it or losing it. But we know that nerve cells that fire together, wire together. So if we're using them, that electric charge is present and those thoughts strengthen. And if we stop thinking those thoughts, then those brain cells will separate and that mode of thinking then becomes a habit of the past. So the more we have negative thoughts, the stronger those connections become. So we create a pattern of negative thinking and we get into a loop. So to change this habit, we need to stop thinking the negative thoughts and speaking negatively and consciously using the MD in our brain, change those into positive thoughts and words. And it's about becoming aware of that and creating those new habits. So we know that every time we have a thought, we make a chemical. And if we have good 
elevated thoughts are happy thoughts. We make chemicals that make us feel good or feel happy. And if we have negative thoughts, um, then we start to feel exactly the same way that we are thinking. So every chemical in the body um, has been released by the brain and is a message to the body. So the body begins to feel the way we're thinking. And many people believe that that is the, the root of discomfort and disease, essentially. And it means we're in a rut. So what we work with exporters on doing is actually taking our mind to the gym to train it, not just taking our body to the gym and really practicing um, thinking, acting and feeling our best, which is essentially what um, sports people and entrepreneurs have done for many, many years. So one of the tools that we use, and this is a tool that has um, been researched by the HeartMath Institute in the United States who research heart-brain communication and its relationship to managing stress. And using this simple but powerful technique can reduce stress and anxiety and bring the heart and brain into balance, which brings coherence, feelings of well-being. And that's an ideal state for exporters to be in, to think through problems and come up with our best ideas. Otherwise, we stay in that state of stress and it's not a good place to be for decision making. So it's a really simple technique. You can do this anywhere, anytime, and it entails you closing your eyes. You may want to do this along with me. Close your eyes, just put your hand on your heart and take in a nice deep breath to the count of five and allow your mind to slow down and then breathe out to the count of five slow deep breaths you may have a happy place in your thoughts that you would like to go to or just bring up a feeling of gratitude um, for small things but if you do that for two minutes the body starts the mind starts to release positive chemicals into your bloodstream that flush out that stress and two minutes or more several times a day can bring you real positive change. And this is a great technique to use if you find you've been triggered, you're feeling anxious or angry, um, or you simply want to get yourself into a good state before a team meeting or before talking to a good client, then this is a tool that um, you can use readily um, to help you out. So maybe that's a simple tool that you will find um, useful, guys. And it is interesting, this breathing technique also helps you to tap into your intuition. You know, some exporters call it that gut instinct. That calm, um, quiet place just helps you to reset and tap into that. And Steve Jobs said, Intuition is a very powerful thing, more powerful than intellect, in my opinion. And I do hear exporters um, talking about that um, quite, quite a lot. And there's a couple of books here I'd like to highlight to you that have had a huge impact on me. One is The Little Black Book of Decision Making, Making Complex Decisions with Confidence in a Fast-Moving World by um, my good friend Michael Nicholas. It's a short read, but a very powerful one. And it brings together elements of, um, let's, let's call it more conscious practice together with the hard realities of day-to-day um, -day business. And the second one is by uh, Dan Brule, who um, worked as a Navy SEAL, uh, still works with Navy SEALs and uh, a lot of um, successful sports people and he covers a huge amount of breath work which again can have a very powerful effect on your well-being both mental and physical so you might find those good books to read 
So are you looking after yourself? Choosing you first is the most important thing that you can do. Are you making sure that you have ways to overcome stress and strain? Um, and what steps can you take to survive? So there are three things here I'd like to run through with you. One is the home setup, and I think we're all probably doing quite well there, but make sure you've got the basics in place, the workspace and the tech set up, but that you are taking time out for yourself as well to do that business development work, because that's absolutely critical. Make a date with yourself, commit to it and keep it. And also simple steps, but a big tick and celebrate when you have the successes. Have some dedicated time for that business development every day. Here, um, I have a standing desk because I had some hamstring injuries a few years back. I can drop it um, with, a, with a motor um, inbuilt, um, but it means that even though I'm working, I'm actually moving around and I'm getting more exercise, which is great. And they're quite good things to have these days. Two screens to work more efficiently. And I use tools like Toggle to track tasks, um, Capsule CRM to keep in touch with clients and, and the sales pipeline, um, Zoom teams and all of the audio and video uh, stuff as well. But what I really like is um, an online booking system so that clients can just book time with me to suit them, which they really uh, value. Having procedures as exporters is also important, Man helping you to manage um, time zones, uh, language protocols and such like, and, and having your guidelines in-house for that sorted out um, is really helpful in knowing where to go for um, help and support. Um, I tend to get dressed for work during the week, even though I'm here at home um, and, and in the office uh, on my own. Um, and having a dress day on Friday, but it is great just to keep those routines going when you are at home and taking time out for you and that detox um, from digital is very, very important. I think the other aspect which has helped enormously is getting a coach or mentor, one or two, where you can meet up and have some good conversations to share some of the issues and such like that you are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's also a good tip for you um, to uh, help keep your, yourself on the straight and narrow. So we'd recommend simple and smart goals, get them written down, make sure you are accountable for them to someone, share what you're planning. It just helps keep you on track. Um, I used to plan big goals and then get disheartened fairly quickly because they were tough to meet. So breaking them down into monthly, weekly and daily goals, which doesn't take long, really, really helps. And that element of um, celebrating rewards and successes is pretty important and, and sharing the load, which I have um, already mentioned. So I think four tips in this section, get present, take charge of your mind and your thinking, use the heart focused breathing tool. And when you do that, you'll notice that you're able to cultivate your intuition, just that knowingness, which will support your decision making and have some simple goals and a good home setup just to help keep you on, uh, on track and focused. So the essential tip number two is all about taking you back to basics, really getting a good benchmark and looking at the business and yourself, doing a business audit to really understand where you're at and gather all of the relevant data, what's working and what isn't so that you can analyze, take action, review the results, refine, reiterate, and, and just get that planning circle going well. So what I'm asking you to do is really shine the light on where you are now and where you actually want to be. So first of all, getting that benchmark and doing some analysis and then getting clear about your future vision and how you're gonna get there. And what I've done here is just jotted down some 
typical questions and these um, slides will be uh, sent out to you afterwards for reference, but it's a good checklist to go through. Do I still have a business? What's the financial situation? Do I still have customers? Are they the same customers? How am I managing to keep them? And any new potential customers? And do those customers actually still want what I offer? Or is there a way there for me to pivot and refine the offer to win more business? Um, how are my staff uh, or my colleagues, my family, and how am I? What is the status in terms of health and well-being issues, both physical and mental? And then this big question about capability. Can I still fulfill client needs? What about the products and services that I am creating and how do I manage that innovation process? And I think a really good tip that I'm working on with a lot of um, my clients at the moment is what are my competitors up to? And doing some in-depth competitor research at this point in time, seeing what they're changing, how they're flexing and adapting. And above all, sanity checking your price calculation. There's been a huge amount of change, but does my price calculation actually stack up? And how are payment terms um, for various different countries? Are they fit for purpose? Are they attractive? And actually, does my route to market to sell still work? And is that um, standing, is that serving me well? So good checklist of things to go through when you're doing that benchmark. And what I'd like to offer all of you today on behalf of EM3 Hub is a free professional audit of your website. We have a very good website effectiveness tool that I would be happy to run your websites through and just send you that report, which is very comprehensive and has all of the guides and how to's in there, um, which may support you in taking a good benchmark of your website and its performance, which let's face it, sits at the heart of all of your export activity. And just a short suggestion for a quick health and well-being checklist um, on a scale of one to 10, one being low and 10 being high. How are your energy levels? How do you feel physically? Where are you in terms of stress and anxiety? How do you feel in terms of happiness and how motivated are you? They are typically five key questions you can be asking yourself and asking your team to check in with that just give a structure and a focus to you um, being able to um, take, um, take more notice of that. So tips here, benchmark, number one, know where you're at and get a good benchmark. Make informed decisions, do your research and make sure that you're making those decisions on an evidence basis and keep your finger on the pulse with your competitors above all. And of course, with your customers well and understand what the wants and needs are there and also understand how you can remain competitive in this ever changing environment. And finally, prioritize the health and well-being of you and the people around you and just check in daily to make sure you know how you are doing. Essential tip number three, keep your head up. It's really interesting this one because we asked one of the most successful exporters I've worked with in a while for his top tip to help guide us through all of the things that may be challenging us and he said don't look down because all you will see is your feet keep your head up and look at the stars, which I thought was really nice because in times of crisis, we tend to knuckle down to business and get focused on the detail in full firefighting mode because there's many pressures we need to turn our attention to both personally and professionally. But when one door closes, another opens and now is the time for us to just step back. And if we can take an independent impartial look at the business, almost take that helicopter view of the business 
take a fresh look at your strategy and apply the lessons that we're learning from lockdown to increase resilience, confidence and profitability. So revisit your strategy. Now, I do a lot of business plans and export plans and sales strategies for exporters, but the ones I like best are the ones that you can write on a single page, a dashboard or something really simple that you can pick up and use every day. Keeping your head up out of the detail for a while. Otherwise, if you don't, you're gonna miss the opportunities or perhaps not spot the problems in time. So having a clear strategy helps to bring focus, intention and planning, um, which is exactly what we need in a crisis and, you know, something new to contend with um, is, is the last thing that we need when our emotions run roughshod, so not a great place for making decisions. So getting that strategy in place and referring to that, you can flex, you can change it, but if you have a structure there, it will work really well for you. So bringing it back to basics, you know, who is the target customer? Which markets are you aiming for? And what's your route to market? And that's really, really important that you get that right. And I think whilst you're going through the strategy, what I'd really like you to be thinking of is thinking global act local. And what does this mean? Well, it means that as an exporter, whether you're delivering products or services, we want you to give that global attitude that you can work with customers in any country in the world, that you can transcend all the barriers, both geographical and the fear barriers, and really trade internationally successfully. But we know that the client likes to buy from someone local to them. And you need to understand how you can compete with competitors in the local marketplace. And the best way to do that, both in terms of your website and in terms of your communications and um, your, your marketing is to act local. So to give customers in country the impression that you have a base in that local country, that you are using content that they can relate to, that they understand and 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 that makes it that that makes you feel accessible, that you understand them, that you have experience dealing with businesses like them, and that you are easy to contact and easy to do business with. And that is really, really important. So getting that global attitude. The other aspect is to really um, do your market research and set your intentions for where you want to get to. So doing your market research will help you get to grips with the behaviours and preferences of clients in that marketplace, but also help you to understand how they do business there, because everything from the search engines to the way of doing businesses, the, the um, what we call the convincer strategies and the motivations to decision making are very different. Um, in Germany, for example, decision making is very collaborative as it is in, in, in China and Japan. Um, so you need to understand things like this before you approach those marketplaces so that you are getting good results. So keep it simple, do your market research, make your decisions from an informed basis and set your intentions as to where you are heading. Get a good vision as you do this strategy review and from an informed basis, you can then set out your route map for how you are going to get there. So there are endless possibilities and endless ways of dealing with all of these things. Our comfort zone is to retreat into the details often and the operational side, to retreat into the known, resistant to change. And what we need to do is to step into the unknown, to embrace the change so that we can tap into these endless possibilities. So stay open, keep an open mind, do your research, look at other things that people have done, model yourself on them. 
uh, you know, embrace the new and tune into that exporter's intuition. Um, you know, if it feels right, then it probably is. Um, so, you know, use all of these tools, use the research and make sure that you get that strategy that you are developing on track and performing really well for you. Now, one of the key issues in all of this is also looking at who you are and who you want to be, because this dictates the values that you are showcasing in the business and your unique selling points. So it's a good time while you're doing this strategy review to actually talk to customers and people that you know about what they really value in terms of what you do, because nailing down your own value proposition, what is it that makes people really want to work with you or buy from you? And what is the value that this presents them with? Getting clear about that and talking to customers, which we'll come on to shortly, is a great way of doing that. And certainly what I would recommend as you are doing that is to really polish up your LinkedIn profiles. Um, LinkedIn is a fabulous resource, over 200, sorry, over um, 722 million people on LinkedIn, many of whom are decision makers and budget holders, and it's one of the best optimized resources on the web. So a fantastic place for you to present yourself and to promote your business and yourself as the go-to expert in your field. So get a great background image, make sure it's on brand. In this section here underneath your name, um, you know, have a good statement. You've got up to 220 characters here to give us your elevator pitch. What can you do for your uh, companies? And have a great headshot photograph where you're looking at me because communication, 7% of it is words. The rest is look and feel and perception and body language and, and just taking in all of those peripherals. So make sure you've got a great image up there as, as well. And I'm just showing you a few different LinkedIn profiles here that hopefully will um, give you some inspiration into um, how you can present yourself in the best possible way. Um, you might want on the background image here, this company Ambic, Francis Condrand in the back there, they have four different core product offers but they've really showcased this British um, furniture, which is what they build, built to last. They've really capitalized on that, which can be a, a good thing to do. Um, John Ewart, a client up here in the Northeast, he spent a couple of months working on his LinkedIn profile after some of the initial work that we did, getting a good background image, a head and shoulder shot and good content on there and posting regularly. And his sales have an engagement has increased with customers 220% over the last couple of months. So it really can make a huge difference. So the tips for this section, revisit your strategy, be open to new possibilities, make sure you are setting your compass and you have very clear intentions as to where you want to go and build your online profile and make sure that you are maximizing all of the opportunities there. So, Jamie, I don't know, are there a few quick questions that I can perhaps help people respond to? Is there anything that you would like to raise with me before we continue? I mean, there's, um, there's a couple of comments, obviously, around um, some of the uh, other benefits of like meditation and some of the apps that are out there that can support it, like Headspace is one of them. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, from I've got a question. Really, it's, there's an awful lot of information there, and sometimes when you're facing that, it can seem overwhelming in its own right and bring its own stresses and so on. Is there any way in which you you would ask? Well, look at. I know you want to break it down in chunks, but where would you start? I would start in terms of just that piece of calm, which is why I've included it in the short one-hour webinar. I would just start with closing your eyes checking in and doing some breathing. Breath, without the breath, 
we're not alive and breath work is such a critical part of reaching that state of calm. Um, so I think I would start there and just look at doing a couple of minutes of breath work each day. Some people, you know, the thought of starting meditation is just too intimidating. Um, you know, haven't got the time or whatever, but checking in for five minutes, two or three times a day will start to help you cultivate that habit and cultivate a practice. And as you start feeling better and you feel the benefit of it, then you can start progressing on to doing more and doing different things. And, and when you do that, so say, you know, you, you've built that into your daily practice and then you look at strategy because strategy is such a, a huge encompassing um, thing to, ch to challenge, even if you put it onto one page, because, you know, so sometimes condensing a lot of information into one page is difficult in its own right, you know, mm -hmm. and, and what elements would you say are probably the most important when you're looking at exporting in particular? Well, I would definitely suggest that you take a look at your website. The website and your online presence is such an important place to go to actually just take a benchmark and see how your website's performing and your LinkedIn profile. For B2B and B2C, that's a great place to start. You know, are we getting enough awareness, visibility? Are we getting traffic and are we getting sales through? So do a benchmark on that and look at the five Ps, you know, customers. Have we got enough customers? Are we focusing on business development and what are we doing to bring that in? Are we clear about what our offer is? Um, you know, what are we, what are we putting out there and what feedback are we getting from customers? Talk to the customers and find out what's going on. Check your competitors, check your pricing. So doing the five Ps, price, people, promotion, place, and product. Yeah. Just taking a look at each of those one page and just doing a benchmark. If you can look back to the previous year and where are you now and just get a benchmark and then have a good look at it. If you can have a discussion with some of the team internally and just see where you'd like to get to what's now possible. Yeah, and absolutely. And, and my personal opinion as well with that as well is it is your shop window and it needs to be dressed accordingly and often sometimes you'll put a, a website up to show a presence but actually have you packaged everything up the way it ought to be you know do you understand your product fully have you displayed it the way that you'd want to you know Harrods would be really meticulous in what they display in their windows and, and why shouldn't any other business yeah you know when I used to work in Turkey years back and I'd go through um you know the marketplace there and they'd polish the aubergines and the tomatoes and they'd create these beautiful features with, with the cinnamon spice and everything was on display outside the shop and they'd be standing there proud trying to entice you in. And it's, you know, polishing your aubergines and tomatoes, guys, and getting them out there on your website, you know, and making the most of what you have because your website's your virtual business development self out there 24-7 bringing clients in who may be interested in what you have to offer so i yeah. think you know this start with yourself really that takes five minutes three times a day and do a little bit of work just checking in and finding a space of calm then do a benchmark look at the, the standard five p's and see how you're performing review your competitors and then take a bit of time out and just think through from a strategic perspective you know, very simply, what can I do here? Because sometimes we're so far into the woods that you can't see the wood for the trees. Yeah, absolutely. So take yourself out, get some space, go for a walk, you know, wherever that may be, down at the beach or whatever, and just talk to people, talk to your customers, talk to people around you and regroup. It's probably going to be the best thing you could gift yourself at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. So, and do that on a regular basis, you know, people think they need to keep working harder and longer and actually taking time out and taking a bit of care and coming back in fresh can be the best boost that you could possibly give yourself. Yep. Very good. Okay. Fab. Lovely. Okay. I shall crack on then. So in terms of 
customers because without customers there is no business pure and simple so one of the core tips um and actually it's an essential that i impress upon my clients is the need to look at your customers and preferably doing database analysis look back at your customers over the past one to three years set the criteria that you want to evaluate so it might be turnover location product and service sector numbers of staff it could be do they pay well are they great to work with um you know all of these different criteria and review the trends and themes that are emerging and take a look at who those top five up to five groups are that you would like to focus on you know where's the low-hanging fruit but who are the really fabulous clients that we would like to have more of group those organizations and if you imagine you're talking to those groups you need to put them in a different group if you're changing the tone and approach of how you talk to them, the examples that you give, the testimonials you use and the evidence that you bring to the conversation. So if you're changing the conversation, create a new group of organisations and do this review work of your database yourself because it's so much rich data that comes from this. Um, that database analysis is, is a real gemstone. Um, we tend to forget such a lot, but this customer database review will work for you. Then once you have that, look to profile your key decision maker within those organizations. Who is that person? What makes them tick? What are their priorities and challenges this year? How do they prefer to be communicated with? Are they digitally savvy? Do they visit our website? What do they want to do when they come to a website? Are they on social media? What kind of content are they consuming? What are they writing and sharing? You can research all of this on LinkedIn and social media and get a real handle on what makes that person tick. And we at no Fuss Group create these one page dashboard profiles, we focus in on the individual, we create a picture, this is not any particular client, um, but we, we give them a name, we put a picture up there so we can really relate to them, and we look predominantly at their goals and values, their challenges and pain points, where they hang out, where they get their information from, and what their objections and role in the purchase process is so that we can make that sales journey for them more effective and more enjoyable. Once you've done that, we then recommend that you go out and interview people, customers who are typical of that particular customer group so that you can bring back evidence. Just a simple 20 minute interview, you might want to record it. It will bring you keywords and key phrases. It'll bring you testimonials. You'll find out what their real challenges and opportunities are. They'll tell you when they go on social media, what time of day they go on social media, and you can bring all of that evidence back and refine that customer profile, which is just a brilliant resource that will sit at the heart of your entire marketing communications and sales activities. So, Tips here, do your customer database analysis, make sure that you are profiling the key decision maker and interview them and refine the profiles. This is such a core essential because without customers and without you really understanding them, it's just not going to work. So essential tip number five is very much about this aspect of minding your language and you know what is the language business case for exporters well fact number one 70 percent of online searches are not in english they're in different languages even though english is one of the most prevalent languages on the web if you 
address people in their native language online, the increase in appetite to buy is 400% because you're engaging with them in their own language. Not only will you be more visible because Google knows that people like to be addressed in their native language, but also people will uh, find the experience easier. I lived in Germany for 14 years and I speak German fluently. Um, but I still prefer to read and talk in English because it's much, much easier. If you use native languages, the dwell time on the website doubles how long they are staying on your website and engaging in the content. And we know from research that 90% of Europeans, yes, even the Germans who love any opportunity to practice their English with us, but 90% of them still prefer to use a local website in the local language. It's just an easier and better experience for them. And we know from Department for International Trade Research, with whom I do a huge amount of work, that if you are using your language skills and adopting languages in your communications and adapting it culturally, that your export sales will be significantly higher. So it does make a big difference. And Willy Brandt, one of the older German chancellors said, if I'm selling to you, I speak your language. But if I am buying from you, dann müssen Sie Deutsch sprechen. Then you must speak my language. You have to speak German. So here I've pulled out for you the top uh, languages on the web, the top 10 languages. Uh, these are the most up-to-date stats I checked yesterday, um, March um, 31st, 2020. And you'll see English, Chinese, Spanish, Arabic, Portuguese, etc. Now, what's interesting here, it also gives you internet penetration in particular countries. But more interestingly, it gives you the rate of growth of internet adoption in certain countries. So, um, you know, I think this is particularly important where in, in Arabic countries, for example, you see 9.3,000% growth in take up of the internet. So it's an idea as exporters to keep an eye on this, not just languages and such like, but also internet penetration and internet growth. So I thought you might find those stats useful. The other aspect that I would like to impress upon you is that with a really great LinkedIn profile that's working well for you, where you've got um, you know, your brochures and your presentations and you've got videos up there, um, because you can upload those to your profile and it's looking great, you can then translate your LinkedIn profile into up to 24 different languages. Um, please don't use online translation tools, get the translations done by native speakers. But actually, when I had my LinkedIn profile translated into German, my rate of engagement and sales in Germany went up by 465% in six months. So it can make a difference. And it's there for free, guys. It's so easy to do. You click in the top right hand box on the globe. It brings up um, the different uh, languages. When you click on add a profile, you make your selection. It takes a clone of your English profile. And with the help of a translation agency, you drop the translation into the profile. It's brilliant. It works really, really well. So take a look, tip number one in this section at your business case for languages. And bear in mind, actually, which I haven't mentioned, that even looking at English, if you are targeting English speaking countries, needs work because the English that's used in America or India or Australia or the Philippines is very different to the English that we use here. So it's always good to take a pass at the words that you're using in English as well for different countries. For example, I had an exporter in America who sold accessories on motorbikes 
and he was promoting mud guards, uh, mud flaps for motorbikes and didn't realize they were called rear huggers in the States, so wasn't selling anything. So it's important that you look at the variations of English, almost treating English as a separate language in its own right. So making sure that you're using global English that's almost a, a different language. And if you are writing for a non-native speaker of English, and there are only 17% of the world's population speak any English whatsoever, 7% um, of them have learned it as a first language, 10% of them have learned it as a second language, you need to keep it simple. Short sentences, bullet points, bold, underlining, etc., and reduce it down. I know Mark Twain said, I would have written less, but I didn't have time. And it takes time to keep something that simple. But do simplify the English that you are using for an international audience. It also means because you've reduced it down, that you're then paying less for your translation work because you will be charged per thousand words for any translation that you do. And do look as a first step while you're perhaps thinking about developing your website and using languages on the website, do look at translating your LinkedIn profile, which is a great optimized resource, which will work hard for you in international markets and help you and your company pages to be found. Look to translate that into a local language as well. It's cheap and easy to do but make sure you're building on a great foundation and you've got a good English website and a good English profile to, to actually build strong foundations for your export communications. So in terms of planning, because having a cunning plan, Baldrick, is, is always a very, very good idea. It's about getting all of these elements together so that you can prepare to pull together a really great plan. And you've done all the research, you're clear about your markets, you know where you're heading. What we want then to be doing is taking the time and making the effort on that preparation phase and getting really solid plans in place and preferably involving some of the team in that maybe getting some outside opinions as well, or some support if you feel that would be of value. Because when you get that plan right, the actual implementation and measuring and refinement of that plan will be much, much, much easier. And of course, it'll be more productive because you've put all of that good groundwork in. So when I'm pulling a plan together, I have a small tool that is so useful that I wanted to share with you briefly. One is remove anything. So this is the four R's. Remove anything that doesn't serve your purpose. If you haven't done it for the last year or two, it's probably not going to happen. Just get rid of it. Revise things that may take too much time or too much money or too much effort and simplify them. Just change them so that they're more, more doable, achievable. Reallocate things that you shouldn't really be doing or don't want to do or don't have the skills to do. Reallocate those to somebody who has the skills, who has got time and who can do it and possibly even to someone who can do a better job than you. Don't feel that you have to learn to do all of these things yourself. And finally, retain the things that you have the skills and the experience and the will to do. So the four R's is a great one to do on your plan when you're in that planning process. So smart goals, have a written plan, celebrate the successes and use the four R tools to help you simplify that and keep it practical, pragmatic and hopefully really stress-free. So six essentials to mind your export business some of them practical, some of them more about looking after yourselves and engaging with your customers, but they're our top six essentials. So in terms of what next, um, what I would like to offer you on behalf of EM3, first of all, is please link up with me on LinkedIn. If you have any questions, that is the um, place to find me. I'd be really happy 
to talk to you um, on LinkedIn. And as a special um, uh, bonus for being on the webinar today, if you so wish, I have a 15 minute health check set up in Office 365. And Jamie will drop this link into the chat. If you would like to book a free 15 minute health check and just to discuss your business, maybe for me to come up with one or two ideas that we can have a chat about that will help you take some of this into practice would be great. It would be my pleasure um, to spend a little bit of time with you, understanding where you're at and how I can help um, you take what we've been through today and start putting that into action for yourselves. So thank you very much. It has been a pleasure being with you today. Um, Jamie, I'll throw the floor open to you as well in terms of any questions we might have. No, I, th I mean, I think you've actually, you've covered quite a lot off and I think it's useful um, obviously to extend your support out to everyone because there's so much to absorb actually. Um, and to be fair, I just wanted to say thank you very much for coming on because I think there's a heck of a lot to take away there. Um, really interesting stuff and particularly looking after yourself at, at these times. Yeah, um, and also, you know, just thanks to all the um, uh, people that are watching today. And if you want to go back and watch any of um, the webinars that we've got, have a look on the EM3 Growth Hub uh, YouTube page um, and, and it will have all of our other webinars, including today's, if you just want to refresh. Because as I say, there is, there's quite a lot of information and Norma, has kindly um, extended uh, an offer to to assist where she can, um, which is great. And I suggest you uh, take that up. Um, so next week um, we have a export max masterclass. Um, so if you go onto the Growth Hub website, um, all the information will be on there. Um, so I just want to say thank you to everyone. Thank you, Norma. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day and the rest of the week. Yeah, lovely. Thank you very much. Take care now. Cheers. Bye bye. Bye.